If you want to lose your grasp on reality and destroy your complete sanity, just listen to the clock. But this will not be easy, let me tell you right now. This is not something to mess around with. It is just an easy way to lose your mind within the confines of your own home. But there are a couple of guidelines to follow. First, pick a room with no windows. It can be a room used for anything, but it just can't have windows. Second, you can start at any time in the day, even if you wish to start at night, for the process will take exactly 24 hours to complete. Third, cancel all appointments you have for that day. Turn off your phone if you have to, for there can't be any distractions for you to focus on. Fourth, make sure it is a calm and quiet day outside and not windy or stormy. Lastly, to start the process, you must go into the room picked, put a clock inside. The clock must make a distinct tick-tock sound when every second passes. Turn off the lights and light a candle. That candle will be your only source of light. Once you have done all that, I honestly want you to ask yourself one question. Do I really want to do this? If your answer is yes, then may God have mercy on you. I am here to merely prepare you for what to expect. Alright, let me give you a little bit of information about the procedure. Back in the mid-1800s, radical members of the Christian, Muslim, and Islamic faith used it as a way to connect with God. It was kept under wraps due to its extreme nature and unusual method to connect with the supernatural. The clock represented life on earth and how short it can be, and the candle represented God as the only way of guidance through life. Most often than not, each person that would go through the procedure would lose their minds and within a day, due to their insane actions, would kill themselves from what they claim to have seen. But if you are one of the lucky ones, you can keep your sanity like me. Okay, now here's what to expect. The first three hours are the least eventful, mainly because nothing really happens, but prepare yourself in these three hours. These are the only hours in which you may choose to leave the procedure. In the fourth hour, you will not be able to escape by any means. The lock on your door will lock by itself and you will have no way to move it. In the fifth hour, you will start to sweat profusely and will start to have feelings of anxiety. You will start to look behind you many times and every time there will be nothing there. In the sixth hour, you will hear noises. Not noises from the house or from outside, but thuds and thumps throughout the house in ten minute intervals with each noise getting louder. In the seventh hour, you will pass out and dream, but this will be the only pleasant hour throughout the process. You will dream about the best moments in your life. Every great accomplishment, wonderful memory, and friend you have made will appear before you. It will have been the best dream you've ever had in your life. Even events from the future can appear. At the beginning of the eighth hour, you should wake up. But when you do, you will feel an extreme sense of elation and comfort, similar to the effects of smoking marijuana. Now for some, this could be considered another pleasant hour, but what comes after will be the start of your suffering. In the ninth hour, you will, in a sense, go from one drug to another. Your feelings of elation will change to that of extreme adrenaline and energy, similar to the effects of any stimulant drug, but a warning, you must try your hardest to keep yourself under control. You're unpredictable, there is no telling what you will do in this state. In the tenth hour, hopefully you will have minimal injuries from the last, but now you'll start to feel normal and your feelings you previously felt would subside. Now you will hear screaming, but the screaming can vary from what sounds like a little girl to a full grown man. You will hear screaming at six minute intervals through the hour. This hour is going to feel like an eternity to pass.
At the eleventh hour, the light from the candle will go out. That's it. You are left alone in the darkness. You are free to think to yourself, most likely regretting the decision that you have made. At the twelfth hour, the light from the candle will reappear. But don't worry. This is another hour of silence. But mentally prepare yourself for what you are about to experience next. In the thirteenth hour, you shall pass out much like you did in the seventh. But don't expect happy memories. In this dream, you should experience every painful moment, suffering, and unpleasant thing in your life all over again. Even suffering in the future, including your own death. This will be the worst dream you will ever have in your life. At the fourteenth hour, you will wake up. This is another hour of silence. But the silence will be broken by your own sobbing. <laughs> Your tears shall continue until the hour is over. In the fifteenth hour, this is putting it very bluntly, is when things start to get weird. You will talk to someone. He is not visible, but he is there. He doesn't have a name, but I'm giving him one. He is your guardian angel, but you can call him watcher or protector. But for me, I call him asshole. Now, this may seem funny, but trust me, it suits him. The first thing he will say to you is, Ask me anything and I shall give you an answer. You can ask him anything about your life, what will happen in the future, and why events occurred when they did. He will give you an answer, but extreme and graphic details, and give reasons for things you will not understand, whether it be a tragedy or a death. By the end of the hour, he will say farewell and leave. In the sixteenth hour, you will talk to your parents, but they do not make physical appearance, mind you. Now it's your turn to answer questions. They will ask you questions about what you have done with your life, and if you do not answer one of their questions, they will press on for an answer until you cannot take it anymore. At the end of the hour, they will go away. At the seventeenth hour, you will talk to the most important guy in your life, whether it be a significant other or your best friend. He will ask why and how you became friends. But keep in mind, he's not looking for friendly conversation. He's questioning your friendship with him. Finding every mistake you have done to cripple your friendship with him. Reasoning with him will not work and will act like your parents did in the previous hour. At the 18th hour, you will speak to the most important girl in your life, whether it be your significant other or your best friend. She will do the same as the person in the 17th hour did, and ask the same questions. At the 19th hour, you will talk with yourself, meaning you will talk with your future self, and trust me, this is the least pleasant conversation. He will tell you things that you will not want to hear about yourself, and will ask you questions you can and can't answer. Soon it will be too much, and you will find yourself screaming at yourself, and anger and self-loathing will be the only emotion you have. In the twentieth hour following the events of the nineteenth, you will find any possibility to hurt yourself. Self-inflicting pain will be constant in this hour. Some have even committed suicide. In the twenty-first hour, if you manage to survive the previous hour, here's what will await you. Music. Yes, music. It will be soft orchestral music with a choir singing Gregorian chant, similar to church music, but more beautiful. By the end of this hour, your wounds will heal. Don't ask me why, even I don't know. In the 22nd hour, the music will stop. This is another hour of silence, but... You have time to think to yourself. The light on the candle will change colors, all colors of the spectrum. This quiet is a sight to behold. It's almost soothing. In the 23rd hour, you will sing Gregorian chant. But your singing will be the only sound in the room. You honestly don't know what you're singing, but it sounds beautiful and you will actually want to sing more. Finally, the 24th hour, 
This is the most interesting. Rumor says that you talk to God himself, but here's how it goes. You are pinned to the floor by some unknown force and something or someone asks you a question at 10 minute intervals. Questions like, are you happy? Or would you like to change? You must answer. You will feel the need to. The questionnaire sounds like a man, but at the same time sounds like an animal. Almost like the roar of a lion. His voice is terrifying, but yet comforting at the same time. After the hour is up, you will be able to get up and the door will unlock. If you're lucky, you will still have your sanity. Now it is up to you as to what you will do with this information. If you want to do this, I'm not stopping you, but I'm giving you fair warning. Some things are beyond the realms of human comprehension, and some things we just have nothing to explain the unnatural. But whatever it is, at least we know we're not alone. Now remember what I have told you. If you want to lose your grasp on reality and destroy your complete sanity, just listen to the clock.